Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. Well, we are moving right along here with all of the summer releases that are coming out. Today we have Butterick and just looking at this little teaser, I am excited. So as we remember, the last Butterick collection left a little to be desired. So I am, I have high hopes. I am cautiously optimistic that they are going to deliver uh, for this season. The first dress is this uh, little, is it like a faux wrap dress, I guess, um, with a cute little flounce. Or without the flounce, the sleeve, I can't tell. It doesn't look set in. Again, we're, I think it's a drop shoulder. That's been very popular. Um, I feel like all year, the drop shoulder, the dolman, the raglan, all of those have been nice. This asymmetrical hem is nice. Um, little back darts. Maybe like a neckline facing I'm seeing there. Okay, okay. I don't hate it, certainly. Um, one of those like maybe great little staples to have. Um, what I look for in wrap dresses usually is where this little like where the crossover point happens, especially for those of you that are real busty, if it comes low, you're gonna have a lot of cleavage. So she has a little itty bitty amount in like the, uh, I guess plus size version. I don't know what um, they call it for Butterick. And then for hers, she has no cleavage. See what I mean? So it just depends on how high up this comes and how full your bust is in relation. But you have to remember, this is gonna be a sort of blousey, see all these, see how full it is on the sides? Because it doesn't have a set in sleeve, it's gonna be a more relaxed fit through there anyways. So I almost guarantee that these are pinned in some way or there's a snap there or something to keep it closed, which is fine. Um, just so long as it's not, you know, too open. That's, that's what I have a problem with, with wrap dresses, okay. Enough about all that. Um, here are our line drawings. Again, we just have some waist darting here. Um, the flounce is cool. It's more of like a, I don't know, like a collar kind of. Um, and then we have without the flounce. And then we have this version that, oh, that's the longer sleeve. So obviously you can add this sleeve to this skirt if you want as well. All right, so fabrics, crepe, rayon, chalet, double georgette. Yeah, all those lightweight drapey fabrics. You can even get a, like a blend that has something a little bit more stable in it that would kind of like keep the structure of the bodice but still be lightweight and drapey enough for the bottom. It's hard to do that online though, but um, you could definitely get something that has a little bit of cotton in it uh, to help just stabilize these this lightweight fabric a little bit something to just consider the sizing is two sizes it comes in 18 to 16 i'm sorry 8 to 16 and then 18 to 24 and here's your fabric requirements for that you need a little bit of interfacing probably for that neck facing and then they're only giving us the length for the finished garment measurements not super helpful in that regard that is one thing I really wish they would reconsider. That information is printed on every pattern piece. So I just don't know why it would be that difficult for them to just report that information and they include it on the envelope and, and online. But certainly there's a reason that I'm just being naive to that. I, I just don't know how the, end, the, the system works, but I wish they would try and figure it out. Okay, now we have this little Mrs. dress, kind of like a, it is definitely a fit and flare, but um, sort of a closer fitting skirt, but it does have this really deep pleat here, which does allow for a wider hip. So this would be a silhouette that I would consider um, being pear shaped. I get real nervous about uh, slim fitting skirts just because 
Well, because they don't look like this in the back. <laughs> That's why. Um, but because of the pleating, you know, maybe it would be Maybe it would be kind of nice, but there is an alternative. They do have this circle skirt, which is also super cute. I love this pattern. I mean, if you guys are following along with my Me Made May, then you know I have a ton of fit and flare dresses. It's just, I don't know. I just really, really like them. I like making them. I like wearing them. So I don't know. Um, it's not like this one is that different from anything else that I own. I will say there's some interesting sewing skills going on here um that puckering should not be there it makes me feel like maybe it's too tall the dart is too tall for her anyways um so yeah this pattern certainly isn't something like revolutionary something that I've never made before but I don't know it's fun cutting into a new pattern and they're so affordable like at Joanne and even whenever they have the sales here dress has an invisible zipper semi-fitted bodice with or without front neck slit, side tabs or front ties. I think the ties are really cute. I don't know about this fabric, but the ties are really cute. A-line skirt with front pleats, which is what this is, or flared skirt with stitched hem. Okay, separate pattern pieces. Oh, separate pattern pieces for the different cup sizes. That's actually really nice. That's actually really nice, but she's still got a really funky fit going on despite that. In the back too maybe she has some like interesting shoulders or something anyways um here are our line drawings so yeah your usual fit and flare bodice darting uh the skirt darting this is a pleat um the tabs are really cool the slit is really cool the tie is really cool i love this and i'm imagining you can make this in a variety of fabrics linen yes crepe yeah, a little drapier, but yes. Cotton blends, yep. Uh, this would be chambray, chalet. Uh, you could even, I mean, maybe even try like a stable knit, I think would be, like this in a ponte would be super cute. Um, okay, so you just need your zipper, your hook and eye, and the buttons if you're making the tabs. Sizing is six to 14, and then 14 to 22. And then here's your yardage. And then they just give some, I mean, <laughs> some widths and lengths. I really don't understand. Like when did, when did this become important to know when you're purchasing a pattern? I know I keep harping on this today, but it's just like on my mind. Like when were they like, you know what? We should really include how wide the skirts are at the hem. Like who cares? I'd rather them just not include anything. Like this is just so useless to me. <laughs> I don't know. Like, like I said, I know that I'm I'm harping on it, but I really like this one. I'm going to add it to my list for when it goes on sale for sure. All right. Next up is another custom cut size dress, which is nice. Ooh, and it includes the bag. That's fun. All right. So we've got a sleeveless, kind of like a squared off neckline, which is nice. A button placket with a little belt, or they're calling a sash. Super cute. Here it is with some patch pockets also. Cute and fun for summer, kind of like a nod to like an apron, kind of. Oh, and here's a ruffled neckline, that's fun. Yep, cute. Here's your bag, that's fun. Lovely fit on her. I like the skirt shape a lot. Okay, so like I said, this is also a custom cup size dress. So the last one had the darting, but this one is princess seams. So if you're building up your pattern stash, quite honestly, you could buy the previous pattern and this one, have your custom cup sizes, that way you don't have to worry about full bust adjustment, small bust adjustment. You'd have a pretty darn good fitting uh, bodice, and then you could just play around with the skirts. You could buy those two patterns and make a lot of different looking garments. So if you're one of my beginners that's joining me in a sew along and you're watching this, trying to learn more about patterns, that would be my bit of advice. Buy the custom cup size, in 
one with darts and one with princess seams and you really, I mean, can hit the ground running with that. All right, so the different versions are, you have a shorter length and then a longer length, which is, I like this little midi length. Um, self ruffle, okay, for the neckline. Uh, there's your cup sizes. D is a lined bag, bias tape seam finish. Uh, okay, yeah, very cute. Here are line drawings. Oh, uh, they have you do little uh, carriers or at least like thread chains for the, the sash, which is really cool. So a lot of top stitching going on here. That's fun, little detail, kind of casual. I really like the ruffle. You guys know I love ruffles though, so not a hard sell. <laughs> not a hard sell for me on the ruffle. And then the bag is fun. I love how they did it kind of coordinating, but not too matchy-matchy. That's fun. You could certainly buy one of like the quilting cotton companies like uh, Amy Butler or Cloud9 or any of those folks that do the quilting cottons and um, make this out of one of their fabrics. They usually have like coordinates. So you can make this out of the rayon and then in the coordinating fabric, you could find it in the cotton and then make this. Or sometimes they have, I think Art Gallery has canvas too. So you could have a lot of fun matching the, the fabrics and it wouldn't be too, too hard because somebody's already done the work to match it for you. You know what I mean? How they have like all the coordinating fabrics and different substrates. All right, cotton blends. This is for the dress. Cotton blends, crepe, chalet, linen, lightweight denim, and then lining fabric. So they did not do separate fabrics for the bag, which is interesting, but I would definitely look at quilting cottons or canvas. I mean, a poultry fabric would work. Certainly you could do leather anything like that. And then here's all your notions. The sizing is six to 14 and then 14 to 22. And your yardage requirements. This is another reason why I love fit and flare dresses. They really just don't take that much fabric. Even the ones that have the longer length. I mean, two and a half is like the most you'd need. Um, you would need some interface. What is this? Oh, D, that's for the bag. Okay, I was like, what? Um, interfacing, lining. Yeah, I wish they would have separated out the interfacing for the dress and the bag. This is a little misleading. Oh, well. Uh, finished garment measurements. We have our width and length again. Not helpful when you're purchasing a pattern. I mean, those are helpful when you're making it, but not when you're purchasing it. All right, what do you guys think of this one? Super cute. I love the button front too. I don't think I have a button front fit and flare actually. I don't even think I have a button front fit and flare pattern actually. So take that. <laughs> it's another good reason to add it to my stash. Okay, now we've got this dress, uh, maybe knit. I'm thinking yes to the knit. Um, it has a high neckline, which is very nice. Interesting choice for summertime though, but also some really um, wide neck bands and arm bands. Really high, small armhole here. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but I don't know how comfortable it is. And then you've got this really nice ruching here, a dropped waist seam. So the seam is all the way down here at her high hip, and then the skirt flares out from there. So if you have a belly, probably not gonna be a great flattering fit on you. This, in theory, would camouflage some of this, but there's just not enough of it. You can tell on her that it's just not radiating out. If it came maybe from this side too, which wouldn't be hard to do, you could just you know fold this pattern piece in half and mimic on both sides if you wanted. You also have this version, which has a really interesting seam line. where the skirt is all the way down here. And I don't know if this is a seam line too. We'll have to look at the line drawings. Yeah, it definitely is. So that's fun. But yeah, I mean, it is a form-fitting bodice. There's the back. That's the other thing about drop waist is that it's gonna cut you, that seam line is gonna cut you right across, like, I don't know, like the top shelf of your bum which isn't flattering on me. 
but I am not you, so maybe it will look nice on you. Yeah, moderate stretch knits. Close fitting with side gathers, neck and armhole bands, slightly flared hem, and three lengths. Cool. There you have it. This stuff is interesting, but I just know that, that, that this would not be super flattering on me. But I do think it's a cute, interesting design that you don't see very often. All right, yardage-wise. Moderate stretch knits, so jersey, interlock, cotton knits, rayon knits. Yep. Um, 6 to 14, 14 to 22. You barely need any fabric. Um, and then unhelpful finished garment measurements. All right. Ooh, this one's fun. We have a dress and sash with these little flounces. It looks to me... Okay, so... It's like knee length, and then they added this little ruffle skirt or ruffle band for to make it maxi length. Here's a better look at like the it's like a flounce that's also a sleeve, so that's fun. Knee length. Ooh, I love these pockets. That's a really nice detail. You can see the ruffle there a little bit better. So she's got a really drapey fabric. This is probably some kind of rayon or polyester or something like that. Uh, if you did it in a cotton, all of this would just be more structured and more like, you know, a boho dress or something like that. But it could be really cute in one of those like gauze or, um, you know, like, in, oh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like the fabrics that they would use for like, those hippie dresses. I guess they're like just cotton. Either way. Oh, key hold back in case you missed that. Semi-fitted sleeveless dress has elasticized waist. I mean, I don't love, they're not super comfortable, I don't think. But anyways, back opening with button and thread loop closure, side slant pockets, which I think are so cool on this dress, uh, purchased by his take for neck and armhole finish. So completely unlined which is nice for summer and for something that's like so drapey like this too. Cute. Yeah, you could just use the same technique that they teach you for this little thread loop and add some to the side seams like that other pattern had to hold this in place if you were worried about it coming undone or falling off. But yeah, I mean, this one's really cute. It's hard for me to buy a pattern that I really only see myself making one version of. Um, I mean, I want to like this peasant tee version, but I mean, maybe. I don't have anything against it. It's just not, it's not something I'm normally drawn to. You know what I mean? Okay, now we've got another peasant kind of dress. Um, this one's V-neck. It has an empire waist. And then like a dropped, I don't think there's a, a actual waist seam, but a drop waist with two ruffles to make a maxi skirt. And then this interesting, like, it's a little itty bitty cap sleeve with a ruffle thing on the bottom of it. You can see it better there. So there's that. <laughs> um, I don't know what I think about that. Here's your short sleeve version with just one ruffle. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really digging this one. I just don't think that it's going to be... Mm, I don't know. Why don't I like it? I have to formulate an opinion. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just like, I don't know. I'm not feeling it. I don't really have an explanation why. Maybe at the end of it, I will. Unlined dress, close fitting through bus with faced neck opening, okay, and invisible zipper. There is above knee length and then armhole finish with purchase bias tape for the sleeveless one. And then there's ankle length for these two are supposedly ankle length. Okay. I need to check something. I'm having... Look at that. So... 
This is so funny to me. So her shoes are flats, but she is standing on her tippy toes. I guess to make herself look, I don't know. Why did, do models do that? Is that a thing? Or did this, or did the heel get um, photoshopped out? Listen, we've seen a lot of weird things on the, <laughs> on these photography um, pictures. So I don't know, but I just had to point out that she's just chilling, standing on her tippy toes. Okay, so here's our line drawings. Yeah, it's just not very, I mean, this looks cuter in the line drawing than it does. I, A, I don't think this, this silhouette is super flattering on me with the drop waist. We've already been over that. But even this version, I don't know. I just not, I just don't like it. I don't know why. I'm sure there will be some really cute versions of it in the world, though. Shally, cotton blends, crepe, double Georgette, rayon. Are you guys getting a trend now with all these fabric types? They're all very similar from spring to summer. It's really all the same. Anytime it has like a ruffle or a flounce or anything, you're going to get the lightweight drapey cottons. And if it doesn't, I'm sorry, lightweight drapey fabrics. And if it doesn't have that stuff, then you get a little bit more stable choices. That's all. It's not really rocket science picking fabric all right so here are yardage requirements you really don't need that much fabric at all I mean maybe when you get up to the double ruffle but all right there's that and then sizing is 6 to 14 and then 14 to 22 all right next stop is a little sundress Okay, so this is like, I don't know, something little ruching, twisty thing. Spaghetti straps, a very large midriff. It's not really a waistband, it's like a midriff. And a long maxi skirt. And then note how the stripes are doing their thing here. So things are cut in certain ways to accentuate stripes. Here is the like circle skirt version. That's super cute. I, this is what I think it is. Then this is going in the stash because I love this little twisty detail. It would be similar to what I did for the Style Maker Fabrics uh, Spring Style Tour with the Nottingham top from Itch to Stitch. Similar to that. Yeah, cool. And then you have this more slim skirt version. And then here, oh, with a little slit to miss that. I do love an exaggerated waistband, like a, a midriff. I do think those are very flattering on pear shapes. This is cute. Again, though, I would really only make this version, but I feel like I could take this bodice and attach it to a bunch of different skirts, maybe even rework the straps a little bit so they're not uh, just straight straps, you know? Uh, maybe try and incorporate the the bodice into the strap. I don't know. So you could, I don't know, I feel like I could rework it a little bit. I could also add pants to the bottom and make it a jumpsuit. I could lengthen this and make it like more of a full skirted maxi. You know what I mean? So I, I know I'm contradicting myself, which I tend to do a lot when I like something. But this little twisty detail is different enough uh, for me to justify all of that. Okay, pullover dress. Oh, this is for stretch. This is for knits. That's even more interesting. Okay, pullover dress has close fitting bodice with twisted front detail and elasticized back and waist. Flared skirt, fitted skirt, skirt with right side slit. Elasticized waist? Elasticized back and waist. I'm not seeing any waist elastic. Just this. But maybe it's just in there, but not really bunching. I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, there are versions. Yeah, I think the fact that it's knit is even more interesting to me. Because I really don't have a ton of knit dress patterns. Fun. Okay, yardage, jersey, interlock, cotton knits, rayon knits, 
yeah, I would really stick in this cotton knit category, especially if you're making these more close fitting ones. Rayon can just be a little bit too lightweight. Maybe it would work for this one. I don't, I'm trying to think rayon knit. You know, I just don't really love those super lightweight knits as a dress. I don't love that on my bottom half. But you could also cut a size bigger and possibly go into like ponty territory. Um, so, okay. Here are the sizes are 6 to 14, 14 to 22. Need a little bit more than two yards of fabric, and that doesn't help me. Okay, fun, 6679. Six, I think I'm going to add that to my list. It could be fun. Joanne has a ton of really great uh, cotton knits right now. We covered them in the um, in the fabric video for the sew along. Um, they have a lot of really good ones there. Okay, now we've got yet another fit and flare. I'm really digging this collection. Are you guys liking it? It's really cute, I think. Hopefully you like dresses. If not, then you probably don't like it very much because literally everything's been a dress so far. All right, we've got a really hard to see sample. It's hard to see what's going on. Let's move to another one. Okay, deep V-neck. Uh, long bust dart, center front seam, and like a some version of a circle skirt. And this little sash. Hers, the first one's just a little bit longer. Yeah, I don't know why that looks so funky. Um, here's another one, a little bit longer. This is a very open neck. It doesn't look that way on her though. Maybe that's why it's so funky. I think what they did is it was too low on her. And so they pulled it up. And that caught, I mean, look at this bust start. It's like going way, way, way above her apex even, right? That's all I can think that they did. Just hiked it up because it was too low. And then there's the back. Okay, so that's interesting. I like how the front, the, the strap is all one piece, and then it goes down your back and connects to the back. That's a lot of fun. You could do a lot of cool things and extend these and like crisscross them or make an X or, you know, just a lot of different options there. Okay, close fitting, dress has close fitting bodice, side seam pockets, and invisible zipper in the back. A line skirt and a pleated skirt. Oh, I didn't even, pleated skirt? I didn't even notice the pleated skirt. Oh, right, right, this one. Pleated. I mean, I like both versions. Cute. Kind of classic, kind of simple, pretty straightforward, but cute. All right, here's our yardage. Uh, crepe, chalet, linen, cotton blends. Yep. You could go chambray. You could, you know, any of those that they've been mentioning already, you could do any of that. Uh, 6 to 14, 14 to 22 on the size ranges. <laughs> Look at that, barely even one and a half yards of fabric for the um, shortest one. So if you've got something in your stash left over or you just found something really expensive and didn't want to buy a lot, you could crank out a really cool dress with not a lot of fabric. That's I like that. I think that that's nice to have in your stash. Maybe this is why my stash is so big because I justify so many things. But it's nice to have some options in there for when you don't have a ton of fabric or for when you find a fabric that you absolutely love, but it's like expensive. You know what I mean? Okay. So, and I think the bodice is lined too, which I also like that. Cool. Cool. It doesn't show 
I wish, you know what else I wish? I wished that they showed what kind of pocket this was. If this is one of those that's like a little teardrop shape, I'm not a fan. But then again, I say that, yet I would just fix it. I would just alter it. I would not buy this because of that. So that's fine. That's fine. No big deal. Okay. Now we've got a retro Butterick. And I've talked about this before. It seemed like many of you agreed with me. Like, I get that they want to do the throwback um, dresses, but why does the styling have to be a throwback too? You know, like, why do they have to do, I mean, I, I would personally be more inclined to buy this if it were styled in a more modern way and where I could see myself wearing it in my everyday life. I don't dress up like this. You know what I mean? So if they're just trying to appeal to the vintage girls that dress like the part, um, then I don't know. I just feel like they're missing a huge opportunity with the rest of us. But this is a really cute halter top, one of those exaggerated midriffs again, and then like a skirt with lots of pleating, a very, very full skirt. There she is. It comes with a little jacket too. The illustrations are amazing. Here's a little jacket with a little like the, I don't know, like a funky like curved cuff type thing. Oh wow, the cover doesn't even show the girl in the model. Unlined dress with close-fitting halter bodice, hook and eye closure, horse hair lined hem, which is a technique that I think is very fun to learn, and it does make for a really beautiful full skirt. Um, the hem is finished with purchase bias tape, and then there's an unlined jacket that closes with thread-linked buttons and has shaped cuffs finished with purchase bias tape. So there you have it. Yeah, I would love to see this, like, not in retro fabric, not with your hair, you know, done up like that. Maybe that should be my challenge. Maybe I should try and make one and see if I can make it look more modern. What do you guys think about these little jackets that are hitting right below the bust? I don't know about that. And the little collar with, is that, that must be the button thread, what do they call it? Thread linked button. Now this is going to take a lot of fabric. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So your dress is like three and a half yards, basically, depending on what size you are. And then the jacket is one and a quarter yards, almost across the, well, on average, one and a quarter yards. So poplin, linen, cotton blends, and PK. Yeah, I mean, you could obviously add to that list. Any of the lightweight, midweight wovens would be good. A seersucker would be really cute and comfortable. I mean, it is unlined, so. Hmm. All right. Nothing outrageous on the, on the uh, notions list either. Okay, moving on. Now we've got a Lisette dress, and I do love Lisette. Um, I love their instructions. I love their drafting. Um, this little, is it one piece that looks like two pieces? I thought we had moved past that a couple years ago. I'm surprised to see it back again. Right? I think I have a Lisette dress like this. And again, with the buttons on the back that you can't button yourself. I mean, I guess you would only need to do like this one and then you could get it over your head, but yeah, this is just not a flattering shape on a lot of people. Dra Unline dress with button, back buttoned overlay, fitted through bust, has boat neck with yoke and invisible zipper closure underneath buttons above mid length. I don't know how A and B are different. Oh, sleeves or no sleeves, okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> mm -mm. Poplin, linen, cotton blends, PK. 
here's your fabric no information there so yeah 6 to 14 and 14 to 22 again I don't know maybe if this thing were shorter I, I don't know not loving it all right our first not dress we have got this tunic and caftan again with the, the caftans are really trying to come in strong this year too um, this one is color blocked v-neck a little bit of gathering there here is one with a like placket is that what it's called Those pockets are cute. I'm pretty sure there's a seam line here. I mean, girl sure does look comfortable. Let's see, is she on her tippy toes and flats? Possibly. Hard to tell. Oh no, they're heels. Okay. Um, very loose fitting tunic, caftan, have neckline and length variations, wrong side of fabric may show. I think on this version, because these little flappy things come apart, you know, and you could see inside them because they're sewn wrong sides together, I think. Yeah, like, I, yeah, here's the seam right there. Sure does look comfortable, like I said. What do you guys think? Are y'all are y'all warming up to the caftans or still no? I mean, A is cute, B is cute. Is this just like, you know, a gown, like a gauze, Georgette, silk, chalet, and novelty shears? Wow. Um. Then you have your letter sizing, extra small through medium and large to extra large. Here's your fabric requirements. Yep, and then your unhelpful finished garment measurements. This is the most wearable caftan pattern I've seen so far. I could sort of see myself in this. I just don't know, I just don't know if it's flattering because it's so big up here and then I already have to cut a bigger size for my hips. So then do I just look like comfortable or do I just look like a potato sack? I don't know, I have a hard time. And you know, it's one of those things where I don't wanna invest in fabric and time and making something that I don't really know if I'm gonna like or not. So maybe I should head to the stores and try on some caftans. That's what my advice to you guys always is. I should take my own advice. All right, so now we've got a jacket and jumpsuit, a woven jumpsuit. Note again, the deep V on the wrap. So for those of you that are fuller busted, you're gonna have a lot of cleavage showing here. Um, it's not super hard to redraft these to be higher. You just kind of draw the line uh, at less of an angle on both sides and then they crisscross higher. That's all. Here's another drawing of it. The pants version is really cute, like the wide leg pant. And then you have this little like, almost like a kimono over top, I guess. This, that is not cute. This over this in the back is too long in the back, right? Hmm. Also very short through the bum, it looks like. That's, that's close to wedgie territory. If she has to bend over for anything, girlfriend's getting a wedgie. <laughs> um... Okay, jacket has a three-quarter length sleeve and contrast jumpsuit in three lengths and two leg widths. Side seam pockets and hidden elastic casing. 
yeah, I could really do without this thing. Maybe if it were shorter, like I said, which isn't a hard alteration to make, but the drawing really doesn't do it any favors. And then here's our jumpsuit. It looks like two wide leg versions with in two lengths and then your little narrow cropped version too. Chalet, rayon, crepe, silk. Yep. 6 to 14 and then 14 to 22. And then here's all your fabric requirements. Yeah, I mean, this is a really, really important one. I mean, maybe with those dresses, I understand why they wouldn't include hip measurements, but like for anything with pants, I just think it's unjust to not include, not include finished hip measurements. All right, now we've got a series of tops. This one's fun. I could see Emily Holman in this. You got a wide neck, drop shoulder, huge ruffles, and then a waist tie. This is it without the sleeve ruffles. This is one sleeve ruffle and a neck uh, notch. There's a more modest little ruffle, lots of just sleeve variations on this. I do like the curved hem though, that's cute. The way they've styled it is also cute. Pullover top has drop shoulder, neckline and sleeve variations, side slits and curved hem, worn with or without sash. Except none of our photos included without the sash, so I don't know what it looks like without it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, fairly straightforward in the base design. And then it's just various sleeves. And I wish they said if this was a face, if there was a facing here, or if it's hemmed. I can't remember if when it has a little dotted line here, if that means facing or hemmed, but I'm guessing maybe facing because all of this has it and I feel like the neckline would be faced. Does it say face neckline? No. Crepe, crepe de chine, chalet, double georgette, charmeuse. Yep. I mean, and with this one without the sleeves, you could even go into the cotton territory. Okay, now we've got extra small to medium and large to extra large and then there's your fabric requirements not too much for any version okay here's another top this one has like a forward shoulder with some gathers in there a slit in the neckline and then these like flutter sleeves this one has like a flouncy sleeve thing. Okay, again, same base, different sleeves. This has more of a bell sleeve. This is a bell sleeve with a ruffle. That's really cute. And then there she is. It has a yoke in the back with gathers. All right, semi-fitted top, sleeve and length variation, self-faced yoke, stitched hem, self-flounce. Okay, flared sleeve, three quarters. Yeah, we went over all that. Okay, here's our line drawings. Cute. I don't see anything that I didn't already mention. Crepe to sheen, crepe, double dojet, chalet, charmeuse. Um, then you just need some bias tape. I feel like all of these like lightweight drapey tops are really nice. I don't wear them a ton. I don't know why. I think because I'm when I'm wearing tops, I'm usually wearing like jeans maybe and dressy top and jeans. I guess that's cute. Maybe I should reconsider. <laughs> maybe I should find one that I like and see how much I wear it. All right, here's another one. 
again with the bateau neckline and this one has like a elongated flutter sleeve not flutter tulip sleeve here's another drop shoulder with a ruffle oh the ruched sleeve that's cool ruched sleeve with the ruffle ruched sleeve is hard to say and then you have your little beat hole neckline Fun. Semi fitted top has opening with button and loop closure, four sleeve variations, purchased by his tape finishes neck. I promise you, you could sew this up in like two hours. This would be a really quick sew. A lot of different versions, right? I mean, you would never know that this and this are the same. And I lied. I said it was a drop shoulder, but it's not. There's a set in sleeve there. So, sorry. All right, yardage. Do I need to keep saying these, <laughs> these same five fabrics over and over again? You guys get it by now. Our sizes are extra small to medium and large to extra large. You need like less than one and a half yards of fabric, a little bit of bias tape and a button, and you're good to go. This is also a very affordable top to make. All right, now we've got our, oh, they're calling this fast and easy on a pattern that's not normally known for being fast or easy. And that is our button front shirt with a collar. Okay, so we've got that with a drop shoulder and a ruffle. That's kind of a fun take on a shirt, on a button front shirt. It has a collar stand too, which is, makes it even more difficult of a collar. That's interesting. I don't know that I would put this in the fast and easy category. They're even calling it very easy. My more experienced sewists who were listening, do you agree with me? That's not very easy, right? But it is fun to see all the different sleeves. That's cute. Like if I were, I don't really go to an office, but, you know, I did just make those high-waisted uh, coral pants. This would be a cute top with that. I have a black version of those pants now, so that would be cute because I would tuck whatever shirt is into those. And I like how it's buttoned, but with like a fun, unexpected detail. It's not, it's like buttoned up, but not too buttoned up. It's fun buttoned up, you know? It's like, I'm serious, but playful. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Okay. So here's the, like the base version. It does have a yoke with some gathers in the back. And then you can add this little ruffle. You can add a less, so this is like a gathered, yeah, I'm probably not using the right terminology. This is a gathered ruffle, and then this is like, kind of like a circle skirt. Does it, no, it just says, I don't know the different terms, but you see how this one's more gathered, and then this one's more loose and flowy? And then this is a longer version of this. That's fun. I would consider adding this one to my collection. There's our famous collection of fabrics, although this time they also added in lightweight linen. And then 6 to 14, 14 to 22 are your size options. And then in garment uh, apparel fabric, you don't even need a yard and a half. That's cool. Well, if you want to add any kind of fun stuff to the sleeves, you will need a little bit more, but not much. And just need six buttons. And interfacing, yeah, I was going to say. All right. I think that's cute. All right. Next up, we've got, I think we've just got three more here. This is a Connie Crawford pattern. Uh, this is like a knit t-shirt. Raglan sleeves, neck band, pretty straightforward. One size, small to extra large. You need your moderate stretch knits that we've already been over as well. Oh, okay. There are two sizes. There's the miss size and then the woman size. So extra, extra large through 6X. And I think that's that's the Connie Crawford brand. She goes 
very, very high up the size spectrum. Not very, very low on this end, but she does go into the 6X range. And with, oh man, again, this would be a super opportunity for them to include finished garment measurements for the bust, especially in this category where you're not used to seeing those sizes. So annoying. So annoying. Okay, well, it is what it is. Anyway, so yeah, modern fit with ready-to-wear sizing. There you go. Looks great on her. And everyone could use a little basic tee. Ooh, I love this one. This one's calling on all my loves, bows and ruffles. So, lightweight drapey top. V-neck with this pussy bow collar thing. Drop shoulder, I believe. And then, yeah, and then you can add a flounce or a sleeve or a sleeve with a flounce. That's really cute. There's not a back yoke, which is interesting for these kinds of tops. Pullover top has collar extending into tie ends, neckline, armhole, and sleeve variations. Also note how um, these illustrations have it tied up tight on her neck with this like keyhole exposed, but our little model girl let it down a little bit and tied it at the base of the V. So you could have two different options there for that. See, like this versus this. Yeah, cute. And I do like a pattern that has a drop shoulder option, but also a set in sleeve option. That is really interesting. That's a lot of bang for the buck. You're going to get two different bodices. Remember all the other ones that we've seen today have had the same base and then they just kept adding different sleeves on? This one has two different bases. So it's basically like two patterns in one. You could change up, you know, this, whatever is happening at the neckline. You don't have to keep this, you know, you could make it just a scoop neck. You could, I mean, maybe I wouldn't go so far as to making it a button front necessarily. I mean, you definitely could, um, but that would be an extreme alteration, I think. Um, but you could change up the neckline and have two different bases and then do the same treatments to the sleeves as all the other ones. You know what I'm saying? All right, our Fab Five fabrics. Fab Five fabrics, that's fun. Fab Five fabrics, that's fun. The alliteration continues. Okay, sizes 6 through 14 and then 14 through 22. Yeah, you hardly need any fashion fabric and just a little bit of interfacing. Cute. All right, and then I think this is our last one because we're not going to cover the making history. We have got a Katherine Tilton pattern. She's known for kind of loose fitting, geometric kind of interesting looks. So this is her take on a button front shirt. We've got a waistline seam, maybe one pocket, maybe like a ruffle neckline sort of thing happening. Yep. Contrasting fabrics is also a signature of Katherine Tilton. Cute. I want to see the back. I want to see. Oh, ooh, are those some pleats? Cute. I think this is maybe a linen or something. Fun. Very loose fitting button front shirt has pleated collar and pockets. Contrast details. Okay, cute. There was another pocket, I just couldn't see, and it does have a ruffle neckline. Just some 
bust darting. The sleeves are cuffed or uncuffed. That's kind of fun. I'd have to find the right fabric for me. I don't know that either one of these are it, but it certainly looks comfortable. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, um, let's see. Broadcloth linen, chambray, shirting, stretch wovens. Okay. You need your little buttons. Yikes, kind of a lot of fabric actually. Two and three eighths of a yard for like the mid range. And then B, they're smaller because you're using three different fabrics. All right. So yeah, about two and a half yards in total. Yeah. All right, I think that's it for Butterick. What did you guys think? I am going to flip through this lookbook real quick and make sure we didn't miss anything like we did with Vogue. So annoying. Um, but yeah, I really think the dresses are obviously the standout for me. Maybe I'll grab one of those um, tops toward the end, but yeah, they really brought a lot of really cute dresses. Hardly any pants. I think this jumpsuit might be the only thing with a crotch. Right? I don't remember any shorts. So here's all of our tops. Yeah, they got them all. So yeah, interesting collection for summer, I think. Um, I don't know that anybody's brought any shorts, really. Shorts, pants. Then again, we got a lot of those elasticized waist pants in the spring. So maybe they feel like they're going to just try and extend that a little bit longer. But all in all, a really, really cute collection. I will definitely be adding some of these to my stash. What did you think? Which ones will you be grabbing? Um, yeah, can't wait to see. I just love this one so much. Um, okay, so yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.